Hi everybody, today's video is one that I am excited about. I mean, I'm excited about a lot of my videos, but like this one I'm really excited about, and that is a both revisit of the Zig Clean Color Dot Pens. We're gonna take a look at some of their newest colors. Spoiler alert, they're gorgeous. And then I am going to actually go through a couple of different dupes that I got to see if they are a passable dupe or not. I haven't tested them yet, I'm gonna do that on camera. Anyway, so I am going to divide this video into sections. There will be a section at the beginning for an overview of the Zig Clean Color Dot Pens and my thoughts on them, especially now after basically using them all the time, hella days now, that's a scientific time measurement, by the way. After I overview the existing colors, I will show you the two new sets of colors that I got. And then once those are done, once the overview is done, I will go into the two different dupes. So there will be timestamps. If there's anything specific you're looking for, you can just check it out in the description and figure out what you want to watch. Otherwise you can just watch the whole thing and get some swatching and some pens and all the things. Let's just get started. So the Zig Clean Color Dot Pens are a really cool kind of, well, the pens, obviously, but what they are is a dual tipped, and that's actually not the same for all of them. The primary awesomeness of these pens is this flexible dot at the uh, tip of one end. The other tip is a 0.5 millimeter writing tip. So with this dot pen, you can go anywhere from a light small dot, about one millimeter, all the way up to a full, I think it's like 10 millimeter dot, something like that. that. That might not be right, five millimeter. I don't remember, it's written down somewhere and I didn't write it down. But anyway, you can go from like dot to dot with these pens. You can create all sorts of different sizes and they come in a whole bunch of different colors. So they are excellent for things like to-do lists, which is the way that I tend to use them the most. I use them for, ah, for tracking my habits because there's little circles that are like perfect size for the dot pens in the Moxie life. I've seen a lot of people do like pointillism artwork with them. That's not something I'm interested at all. That would be fun, but it's really not my thing. What I mainly use them for is like the bullets or the dots for to-do lists, bullet journaling, etc. And I love them for that. They are super handy. They add color. Even if I'm not doing anything else with my planner, using one of these will pop up some color. Like I said, I actually have eight colors that I keep in this mo in this bag right here with the same matching sort of highlighters from uh, Mildliner to use for my goals. You can see here, here's an example of my action items with the dot pens that are tied in with the colors of the Moxie Life. So I use them for a whole bunch of different things. Another thing that I know some people use them for is like I know Julie from Julie's Plans loves to like use the dots for her dots and then use the writing tip to fill in things like times in like the time slots of a daily planner because it's a little less blatant than using black. Anyway, so that's how I use them. I did the review wondering if I was going to use them and they have become, with a major exception, which we will talk about, they have become one of my most used planning supplies. And as a matter of fact, I have a video coming out soon that will be about me. I think it's next, I don't remember when it's coming out, but there'll be a video coming out soon about my top most used planning supplies and spoiler alert, these pens will be on it. All right, so the main set has 12 colors and this set is the set that has my most favorite colors of all of the ones that I've owned up until I've got some of these new sets. Like pre-new sets, these, some of my favorite colors are here. So it's a nice mixture. You've got some of everything. None of them are super dark. The darkest colors are probably Splash, Ocean, and Denim, but they are really gorgeous. There's a mix of everything that you could possibly want here. My favorite colors and the most used from this set are definitely Ocean, which is the kind of teal color, Hyacinth, which is like the light kind of purple color, and Platinum, which is the gray color. As a matter of fact, I actually have a second Platinum one that you can buy off of Jet Pens. Uh, and you can buy any of these off of Jet Pens individually, and I bought one of these off of Jet Pens because I'm, this one's gonna run out soon. I will make a note here overall, even though I've noticed it most with these guys because these are the ones I've used the most, but it is also noticeable on some of the other ones at least in the 
uh, dual tipped versions that they can get a little leaky as you can see here for example they do get a little leaky so just be careful about that I don't have a problem with them leaking like outside of the pen that I've noticed but I have noticed it when I've like written and I've gotten on my fingers although this is not that this is from an ink exploding when I was reloading my printer today there's 12 colors in the main set the main set on Amazon is $29.99 this is on regular 20 I think it's 24 pound printer paper and you can see here there's definitely bleed through with any with a lot of these colors but I have noticed that on 120 GSM 100 GSM paper the paper in the moxie life it doesn't bleed through unless you're like really laying it down but on regular paper they definitely soak through a little bit the basic set is six colors and these colors are also dual tipped they are more saturated kind of I guess basic colors you got black red pink green blue and violet and these colors tend to be a a little bit more kind of standard b they're more saturated so if you want a writing pen that also has a dot pen you're going to have a better luck with this set when it comes to pens that are going to show up better like if you are writing with say blue bonnet it's a really pale color and it might you might run into problems with that but with this set the only one that even slightly might be a problem is pink, and even then it's still more saturated than any of the pinkish colors, except for maybe the island coral. In this set, my favorite color is the green. Green is my favorite color, but like I love this green as much as I love ocean. I feel like they're kind of green. This green is just a more saturated version of ocean, and then I also really love the pink. But I definitely do not use these colors as often, except for the fact that the red... I think the red might be the only one that I use for my Moxie Life Goals, but that one tends to be the most used just because it matches the red of the Moxie Life Goals. This set you can get on Amazon for $14.99. And like I said, much like the first one, the first set, they are also dual sided with the 0.5 millimeter tip and then the flexible dot tip. So the metallic six color set comes with six colors and it actually shows up really beautifully on black paper. The pen tip on these is a one millimeter pen tip. So it is much thicker than the 0.5 millimeter tip of the other set. I don't use these hardly at all. I have used them a couple of times when I really wanted the color of them or whatever. But the problem for me is, is that they are so inky. The circles often don't come out exactly round they hella not only bleed but they also warp the paper because they're so inky and I don't do any or very hardly any blackout planning this is the set for you if you want to blackout plan to use these in the same methods that I use them but for me they are I have them and I'm glad to have them especially for videos like this but generally speaking these go untouched they're just a little too hard to control and I don't use metallic pens very often to begin with. And when I do, I prefer a brush pen. You can get these, this pack of six, for uh, $18.99 on Amazon, which is $4 more expensive than the basic six colors set, which I imagine is because they're metallic. All right, now we've gotten through the double-sided sets. It's time to bust into the single tip sets. So here are the mild colors. They are baby pink, peach bliss, butter, pale mint, powder blue, and English lavender. Much like they say, these are very pastel colors. They are singles, so they only have the dot end. The cap has like a little pen clip, which is not the case on the other ones. And I've also noticed that these these ones do not leak anywhere near as intensely as my dual tipped clean color dot pens do. The problem I run into with these is that they're very mild. Like I don't mind, I love me some mild liners, but like these are very pale and often they are a little paler than I want. Now I like having them because again, they do come into play when I want those colors, but they are not the colors I tend to gravitate towards. I prefer a color that's a little more saturated. What I do like about this set though, is it does fill in a couple of areas that I personally find to be missing in the original colors. The pink, not so much. It's only like a step down from the candy pink. And if I'm gonna use it, I might as well just use the candy pink. The uh, Peach Bliss, which is the orangey color, is like a very desaturated version of Island Coral. However, it also is very similar to Fawn. So if you have this set, these two colors, the pink and the orange, are really not a reason to buy it because you can get a very similar 
color out of fawn and candy pink. The yellow, though, is very much a desaturated version of Summer Sun, but like the difference is big enough. Like the difference between the orange and the fawn, the peach bliss and the fawn, is to me not very noticeable, is very noticeable with the butter. But I still don't use this one very often because there's a very rare occasion that I want a yellow this light for this particular use. But these other three, I do tend to use more. The pale mint, I like I said, I love greens, give me all the greens. The powder blue, I actually love it because not only is it a pale color, but it is a different color than most of these. It tends to lean very periwinkle, and this is actually a color I use fairly often when there is when I want a to-do list dot that matches like a sticker kit that I'm using, and this tends to be a color that pops up a lot in the stickers I buy. Same for the uh, the English lavender. The um, the two purples that are in these sets, the hyacinth and the violet, tend to lean a little warmer, and this tends to lean a little cooler. So I feel like there isn't an equivalent. So these three specifically, I love having because I feel like they flesh the line out a little bit more, um, but I could take or leave these three. This set is $12.99, and I'm assuming it's less because they are only single-sided. So now that we've talked about these guys, the new sets, the two new sets that we're gonna talk about are the same style as the singles here. So they are single-sided Zig clean color dot markers and you get them in a set of six. When I bought them, you could get them both on Amazon. Currently, I believe you can only get the highlighter colors on Amazon. There's some other places you might be able to find them, but I would just like stock it. I left the link down below. Just stock it for when they come back. We'll go first with this first set here, which is the highlight set, highlight colors. It is a six pack of dot markers that, I haven't even opened this one yet. Like I have definitely busted into the mild smoky colors and started using them. But I'm gonna save them for last because they are definitely my favorite set of these two. So there are six colors here that are based on like the fluorescent highlighter kind of situation. Aside from the gray, these absolutely are what they say they are. They are neon highlighter colors. We have fluorescent yellow, fluorescent orange, fluorescent pink, fluorescent green, fluorescent blue. No, wait, I'm sorry. The blue is called light blue. Everything else is fluorescent. Light blue and light platinum, which kind of throws me off because I feel like light platinum is darker than platinum. I'm going to put platinum right up above light platinum. No, it's lighter. It's not much lighter, but it is lighter. I would say looking at this set, the light platinum feels to be, I would love it if this was a lighter gray than this to have two different grays or if the platinum was a little darker, but looking at them here, like the bottom one, the light platinum is like a hair lighter, but not enough. If I already was like, mm, the peach bliss is not as useful because I have fawn, then this is like, what the fuck kind of. So there is that. Also, this is not a set I plan to use very often unless I'm doing like a neon week or something. Standard highlighter colors don't appeal to me. If there's one thing that mild liners have done, it is really sold me on the more muted highlighter situation. These also like the other six packs, the other single-sided six packs are $12.99 on Amazon. But then we have this set, which is by far my, not only my favorite of the two new sets, but um, almost every single one, probably every single one of these colors is surging right to the top of my favorite colors in the whole line. And this is the Mild Smoky set. Also six colors, single-sided, $12.99. The colors we have here are grayish green, pale turquoise, pale rose, pale moss, oatmeal, and wisteria. And I love all of them. What they basically are, I mean, the, the name, mild, they're softer, desaturated colors. They're nowhere near as vibrant as the original sets. That's the mild side. And then the smoky side is also definitely true. These are not like a pure kind of color as much as they are sort of a foggy kind of color. And I love them. I think they're absolutely beautiful. They're not neutrals, like the new mild liners, which are neutrals, but they are just, they're much more of like almost like a boho or a cottage core kind of color palette, if you will. I have an 18 year old, don't, don't at me. Um, but yeah, I love all of these colors. If I had to pick two favorites, I would go with the grayish green and probably the um, pale moss. Again, I'm, I'm a hoe for greens. 
Although I will say I love that the fawn is like a, this is like a desaturated version of the fawn. They're basically the same kind of amount of color, but just this one is a little neutralized. Like if you're a painter at all, you know that if you add in a complementary color into your paint, that it kind of, it brings it to be a little bit more muted, a little bit more like towards the gray end of things rather than the bright end of things. And these are very much in that realm. So I love them. I think they're beautiful colors. I'm gonna use the shit out of them and I'm just excited to add them to my collection. A couple other notes about the mild liners over, or the Z, fuck. A couple other notes about the dot markers overall. According to the website, you should store them horizontally. I am not, I store almost all of them horizontally except for the ones that I keep in this bundle here. So I need to think about that, but because they are dual tipped, the dual tipped ones at the very least should be stored like this to keep them for their longest life. And the pigment is water-based. So these are all the colors of the Zig Clean Color Dot Markers. Overall, my thoughts. Um, I love them and find them to be extremely useful. However, I might be a completionist, but if I was going to repurchase, I probably would not repurchase the basic set definitely not repurchase the metallic set, probably wouldn't purchase the highlight set, but I would definitely get the main set, the mild six colors and the mild smoky for my own personal tastes. Of all of them, the only drawbacks to them are that if you press down too hard, they can bleed through even thicker paper if you're not careful. The metallic colors, like I said, are not only very inky, but they're a little less precise when it comes to making the dots. But overall, if you love dot markers, or if you are thinking of giving dot markers a try for like doing bullets and or pointillism or whatever you wanna do, these are solid markers. However, if you don't want to spend $30 on a 12 pack and then an additional 15, 13 or $15 on a six pack, that's what we are going to be looking at the dupes for. So for the dupes, I have two sets and I am going to look at them separately. Again, timestamps will let you know if you want to see a specific kind of dupes. This first set is the Uhuhu, Uhuhu? set they make a lot of quote dupes for various kinds of markers they have an alcohol marker set that's supposed to be a dupe for copics allegedly they've got brush markers that could allegedly be dupes for tombos i have had extremely spotty luck with uhuhu art supplies i uh, I have had some good luck with them and some not so great luck with them i'm not necessarily super hopeful about these but they are a um interesting potential dupe. So this is the, their Uhuhu dual tip dot pens. There are 15 colors. In this 15 colors, there are five metallics and it is also water-based ink. The tip is 0.5 millimeter, just like the dual tipped markers of the regular Zig Clean Color dot markers. And then the dot tip is the flexible one that you can use different sizes for. The price of these is $13.49 normally, but it's currently $11.99 as of the time of filming this with a coupon. So for 15 markers, this is like, this is less expensive with the coupon than the six packs of the other colors. So definitely price wise, these have beaten the Zig. And now we'll check out quality wise. Now, much like some of their other markers that I've seen, these definitely look like they could be trying to dupe the Zig Clean Color Dot Pen. They have a very similar look to them. They have the uh, clear cap for the dot end and the color cap for the pen end. With the white body, there is a ridged area for like a grip by the writing end, just like there is with the Clean Color Dot Pen. They, have a, they look very similar to each other. Let's look at the tips. So here is the tip. Oh, okay, the tips are different. The tips actually look more similar to the metallic pens, but this is not one of the metallic ones. The tips tend to look a bit more similar to the metallic markers than they do to the Zig, the regular Zig markers. So let's test it. Let's go with a color that looks like it could be a total, a total dupe. Where is the lid for this? I mean, they all kind of do, but like this guy here, they don't have names for their colors, but this guy here looks like it could be a solid dupe for like they it look, the colors look almost exactly the same on the caps for my personal favorite, which is ocean. So let's take a look. I'm going to do the zig on top and then the hoo hoo on the bottom. Whoa.
All right, so definitely some differences here. First and foremost, the woe was the actual dot itself. The dot end of this is a lot firmer and more <sighs> tougher, maybe isn't the word. It's firmer and like more less yielding than the zig, which is one of the things I like about the zig because with the zig, you can do a light dot, but you can also press down for a harder dot. And that level of pressing down where it like flattens out onto the paper, that was one of the new ones, but I wanted to use one of the new ones because I have used the shit out of this one. And maybe I was like, maybe this one was overly used and that's why it was so smushy. But no, one of the new ones also was just as smushy and smushy is an actual word that we're using now. So you can get your small dot, which is only slightly smaller than the small dot from the new one but then pushing it down, that's the biggest dot you can get. And it was kind of leaning to the side. So definitely, oh man, and it's also bleeding right the fuck through. So, huh. So there's that. These, you can't even lay as much pressure down. Like, I'm gonna see if I can just do like that same size dot, but without pressing down too hard. And notice it's already starting to bleed through. So definitely inky and you can't get a very big dot with these without completely soaking through your paper. The other thing I noticed was that the marker tip of this is very reminiscent of like a medium flare. Whereas the marker tip of this guy is more reminiscent of like a, uh, an ultra fine flare. You know, ostensibly they're the same size, but this guy right here, I can pretty much tell that with more than a couple of writings, this tip is going to soften and break down and be a lot fatter the way a flare does. Whereas this one I have written with these and it hasn't made like a dent in the tip. So definitely for these guys, I would say that if you are heavy handed, then you may struggle with this because with as heavy handed as I am, pushing down, only getting a dot of that size, but bleeding through the paper would frustrate me and I would destroy this writing tip in no time at all. So when it comes to the characteristics of the pens, if you prefer a softer, more flexible um, dot tip, then these are not a good substitute for the clean color dot and the writing tip is not a equivalent substitute. It doesn't mean it's bad, it just means it might not be what you were hoping for. But now let's do the other comparison, which is checking the colors. So what I'm gonna try and do here is I am going to line up the Ahuhu colors with the color that the pen looks like. There are so many of these that look exactly like these other pens, or at least mostly like these other pens. So I'm gonna line them up next to their equivalents and we'll see what the color selection looks like. So these colors kind of run the gamut. Let's start with the metallic colors because those are probably the most equivalent. So there are five metallic colors that are almost identical to the metallic colors of the Zig on both the regular paper and the black paper. I would say that the red is the only one that is like visibly different, but they're generally the same. It looks like they perform about the same. It looks like they bleed about the same. The Uhuhu were slightly easier to use and I like the tip better. The tip is a little less soft, like this soft um, writing tip with the metallics is not my favorite. So the writing tip that I don't like compared to the standard ones actually is better than the metallic ones. So I would actually say that the Uhuhu markers, at least in theory, are as good as, if not better, than the Zig metallic markers. The only real situ issue for me is, is that they look exactly like the other pens, except for a slightly shinier uh, cap but there's nothing else that makes them stand out as metallic, so it might be easy to get mixed up. Now we go to the other colors. So the colors that are left, there's 10 colors left because it's a 15 pack. Of those 10 colors, there was one sort of equivalent to the, the green. The one I thought looks like the ocean color is actually more similar to the green in the basic set or maybe even in between. Um, other than that, there are a lot of close, but not like close, but no cigar matches to the main set. The yellow is almost equivalent to summer sun. The, this peachy color is a little less saturated than the Island coral. The platinum, the silver is a little bit darker than the platinum. The hyacinth, the purple is a little bit lighter than the hyacinth, the fawn, 
equivalent is definitely darker and it is probably the closest thing to like a dark brown in the whole thing that I've tested so far. So that one actually might be one I hang on to because there isn't a brown dot that I have that's like this kind of brown. Um, nothing for splash. As for salmon, this color is a little bit darker. The blue bonnet color is almost exactly the same and the candy pink is slightly darker. There was also one color, a yellow, that actually fit more with the mild colors than with the main set. Nothing that matched the highlight or the mild smoky. Overall, for this one for a dupe, for the price, if you are okay with a slightly firmer tip and a less useful writing tip, at least in my opinion, but it is my opinion, and you want metallic markers, I would go with the Ahuhu set. But if you like a slightly squishier tip and a more precise writing tip, this may not be the dupe for you. And now we're on to our second dupe, which is the Shuttle Art Dual Tip Dot Markers. These are also water-based pigment. The writing tip is supposed to be 0.5 millimeters, but again, so was the uh, writing tip for the Ahuhu, and I don't think that that's the case at all. It actually looks more like a one millimeter writing tip to me, or maybe slightly smaller than that, but whatever. The dot markers are supposed to go from about one millimeter to five millimeters. There are 18 colors, and in this 18 colors, we have two metallic colors, but then there is also at least one neon color. This set is $13.99. They're also water-based, much like, just like all of the other ones. These ones also have a similar look to the mild liners, but don't look anywhere near exactly the same. One thing that is different is that it, this, it's hard to see, I don't know how well you can see it, but instead of being one like evenly shaped barrel, it kind of tapers outward when you come to the dot end of things but has a similar look in that there's a clear cap over the dot and a color cap over the writing tip. The dot looks similar to the uh, clean color dot marker. They have a similar shape, a similar kind of look to them. They just have basic information on them, much like the Ahuhu, which only said Ahuhu dual tip markers. These ones just have basic information, slightly more information, no color names or anything like that. Now looking at these guys, also there seems to be some that could be similar in color, but these are less obviously the same color as the, uh, the Zig than the Ahuhu. The Ahuhu's looked at least in packaging like a like knockoff basically of these guys, but the shuttle art ones, the packaging seems to at the very least not be quite as obvious. Let's test these puppies out. And again, we're gonna go back to the zig. I already made this little spot here with the ocean, with the dot and with the writing tip. So we'll grab this one that looks kind of similar to that. So the dot here, like the, like the uh, uh -huh, these guys don't get very big. And when you press down on it, it feels like it's pushing to the right or to like the side rather than a flat, like flattening out to make a bigger dot. One of the things with the zig is when you press down, the whole thing kind of smushes down into a bigger dot. But this one, it feels like the whole tip is kind of pushing to the side, which is making less perfect looking dots. It's also bleeding through like a motherfucker. But the tip, however, is more similar to the zig. Actually, I really like this writing tip. It reminds me of the tip of like the Erin Condren dual tip markers, the writing tip or the writing tip of or the Tabo Twin Toad markers. That's similar to that. I actually like the writing tip of this best, I think of all of them. So there is that. But the dot tip is definitely not very flexible. I would almost say the writing tip is more flexible than the Ahuhu, but not by much. All right, let's check out the colors of these. Okay, quick note before I forget, the metallic writing tip is similar to the metallic writing tip of both the Uhuhu and the Zig, probably closer to the Uhuhu than the Zig. Damn it, I was hoping that the writing tip was gonna be similar to the other writing tip because then I would be like, fuck yeah, these metallics are the bomb. But no, they're basically exactly the same as the other sets of metallic markers. So definitely not a reason to purchase the shuttle art set unless you're only interested in gold and silver metallics because those are the only two metallics that are in the set. The shuttle art actually has a wider variety of colors than the Uhuhu 
and like there are more colors here that do not have a counterpart with the original sets of zig and there are some colors here that like i would actually want to add even though i'm not a fan of the tip as much there are some colors definitely kind of like wanting to add this brown color from the uhuhu set for one there is a color that goes really well with the summer sun but then there's another yellow color as well like there are two yellow colors that could be handy there's a red kind of an orangey marigold red and then an orange right the red and the red go together and the orangey marigold color is like a more saturated version of the island coral. And then there's like a true orange that is not fluorescent. It's just brighter, I guess. Uh, the platinum, the gray color is almost exactly the same as platinum. The brownish color is very similar to fawn. This bluish color is very similar to splash. The blue bonnet and candy pink have counterparts. There's also a couple of different greens. There's like an olive green, which is a little more olivey than the kiwi, which I love and I want to kind of hang on to. There's a color that could either be ocean or green kind of in the middle. And then there's like an, a regular like true green. that's not a lime green like the kiwi and not a dark green like this, but more of like a brighter kind of Kelly green. The purple seems to be very similar. And then there's the pink. There's like the light pink, like the candy pink. And then there's this pink, which I put here, but then I realized that might be their version of a fluorescent pink. Where'd it go? Where did the fluoro pink go? It's a little darker than the, a uh, little darker than the highlight pink. Anyway, so I think that if these kinds of colors, which are a little less soft, they're a little bit more vibrant, um, are interesting to you and you just want a couple of metallics and the shuttle art set might be a solid choice, especially for 14 bucks. There are definitely colors in this set that I'm going to add to my, my drawer of dot markers. I don't like the dot pen as much as I like the zig. It's a little softer than the Uhuhu, but it, like that lean, I think with use, it might start to really put it askew, but I also like the tip better. So there is that. For the price though, for 14 bucks, you get the most markers from this set of all of the sets. Like this one has 18 colors in it and only two of them are metallic. The biggest issue I would run into besides the fact that I don't care for the tip that much is that some of these, specifically the, the red and the orangey red, are a little hard to tell apart. And because there's no color information written on the barrels, you might be a little mixed up and would have to just test things before you use them. So of the two, quote, dupes, I think they both have their pros and cons. I would go with the Uhuhu set if you're really into metallic markers and the writing tip doesn't matter to you. I would go with the shuttle set if you want a bigger supply of colors and just a couple of markers and you're looking to have something with a good writing tip and is still inexpensive. But I don't think either of these are solid, solid dupes for the Zig. There is a difference in quality which you can pay for with the price. But if you're really wanting to try dot markers but can't afford to drop the cash on the dot markers, I think you would do well with either of these dupes depending on what it is you're looking for. So that is my kind of overview of the dot marker situation that I'm in. If there are other dot markers you would like me to test out and compare to these, maybe we'll do a Thunderdome, maybe we won't. Just let me know in the comments below and especially if you can tell me what brands that you want me to look at because uh, it's really difficult for me sometimes to, uh, like I just go and I search things and then I find things. So giving me specific brands gives you a higher chance of me actually taking a look at them. Overall, I'll tell you, aside from the metallic pens, which I really just have, I'm not a blackout planner, so that's just take that with what you will. I find dot markers to be a awesome way to add color, even to the most mundane of to-do lists, and I love having them so much so that they stay out on my desk all the time. Usually this bucket, which I've talked about before, has the eight colors that I have matched to the Moxie Life colors, plus whatever dot marker I'm using that week in my planner, if it's different. Sometimes it is one of those colors, but if it's not, then it's in here as well. So they are definitely something I use. They are definitely worth it to me. And if the cost of the regular mild liners is a little too, or fuck, if the cost of the dot markers is a little too much for you, I presented to you two dupes that would be at the very least sufficient. So yeah, let me know in the comments, anything you'd like me to take a look at and your thoughts on these. And your thoughts on the new colors too, the mild smoky. Do you think they're as sexual as I do? Because fuck yeah, sexual healing right there. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, friends, peace.